Hi, in this tutorial I will teach you about architecture tools available in Revit with the Dimension Pack, what tools are available and how to use them. There is essential tools for dimensioning in the panel and in the extension you will find some utility tools and configuration to control the standards of these dimensions. I will be using some of the common tools available in the common panel and there is a dedicated tutorial for the common tools in another video you may want to check it. There could be also some interchangeable or common tools between the architecture tab and the structure panel. Uh, so you may want to visit the structure tutorial uh, if you need. However, the main idea behind how to use the tools uh, are the same across all of the panels. Let's start off by placing some of these curtain wall dimensioning. Uh, I, I, you have two options, the single option and the multiple options. Single option lets you select only one element at a time to dimension, while the multiple option lets you select multiple elements to place dimensions at once. I will choose multiple and select all the curtain walls and plan, click finish, and now you'll see that I have uh, dimensions placed for the curtain walls. You can control the distance between the dimension line and the wall from the common tools configuration distance to dimension change objects. Let's make it 1000. The numbers entered here are entered in your project units. So if you're working with feet, uh, inches, uh, centimeters, millimeters, now I'm working with millimeters, so I'm going to write 1000 millimeter, and I will run the tool again, and now you'll find the dimension line is closer to the objects. How do you control the, uh, which placement side the dimension line is placed onto? Uh, is set from uh, the wall function if it's, it's exterior the dimension line will be placed to the exterior side of the wall uh, if it's interior or any other function it will be placed to the left or to the top of the element from the architectural panel architectural configuration uh, I will select curtain wall mullions and deselect curtain wall grids and also let's make this 2000 mm -hmm. and now instead of dimensioning or including, the, or including the curtain wall grid in the dimension line I will be including the curtain wall mullion width in dimensions I'll do the same for the basic walls, select multiple elements, click finish, and now you have the basic wall dimensions placed. From the common panel, you have a merge tool to make multiple dimension lines into one single dimension line, like so. I'm going to click undo before the placement of the basic wall dimensions and I will reset this to, to 1000 millimeters. Click the tool again and click finish. If you would like to place the exterior dimensions of a plan view, you can use the exterior dimensions tool. You'll need three conditions to be met. First, the exterior walls need to be marked as exterior in their type property function. Second, the wall needs to be facing outwards 
So you need the, you, so you'll need the orientation of the wall to be modeled correctly. And third condition is the elevations far clipping offset. It doesn't matter if you clip without line or clip with line, uh, but you need this distance to be set correctly so you only see the elements you would like to see inside this elevation when you open its view. I'm going to run the exterior dimensions and it uses the same uh, configuration. The distance between dimension lines is set from the option of com configure, configure common tools. I have now the distance 1000, so the distance between each of these dimension lines is 1000. And also you can select to include whether curtain wall, grids, curtain wall, mullions, basic wall opening widths, basic wall openings center. I also have the tool for Worlds by Line, which lets you pick two points on screen and all of the walls between these two picked points will be dimensioned automatically. You can include the details of these walls from the configure architecture window. You can select the dimension finish, finish faces and or core faces of these walls. There is also a built-in tool and a separate tool, which is the align dimensions, which we have discussed previously in the common tools tutorial. I'm going to define these settings and rerun the tool. I will have move segments list than 150 millimeters and move segments by 500 millimeters and the stacking distance to be, let's say, 300. And I'm going to run the tool again. And now you'll find that the dimension texts are auto-aligned automatically. I may want to increase this stacking distance to 500. Going to an elevation view, the same tools we used, curtain wall, whether single or multiple, and walls, basic walls, whether single or, or multiple, can work in the elevation and or section views as well. So curtain wall, single, and select a curtain wall in elevation, you'll find that the dimensions is placed automatically. Again, you can include the curtain wall grids and or curtain wall modules from the architecture configuration window. Same applies to basic walls. You can also dimension wall profiles, basic wall profiles by line, select a wall, then pick two points on the screen and all the edges between these two picked points will be included in the dimension line. Going back to a plan view, 
we have wall thickness. Click the tool, select the wall, and automatically this wall will be dimensioned. And you have the options to include core uh, finish faces, core faces, and whether to reference this wall to the nearest grid. So if you uncheck reference grids and wall thickness and run the tool again, you'll find the wall is dimensioned but only to the layers of this wall without referencing to the nearest grid. Similarly, you can uncheck core faces and select a wall again. And now I only have the total width or the total thickness of this wall. We have door to side wall dimension, which Let's you select multiple doors at once, click finish, and it will place the dimension or the distance between the door and the nearest side wall. You can also place dimensions to doors and or windows, sill and head dimensions. If you select a door or a window or multiple doors and windows at once, it's going to place dimensions the width of this door and or window, the head height and the sill height of this door and window. Again, the distance between the dimension line and the object is set from the common panel and the placement side of the dimension line is controlled by the orientation of the object. You can also flip the dimensioning offset direction by entering negative values here in the distance box. So let's say negative 1500 and rerun the tool again. And now we have the dimension placed by negative 1500 to the other side of the element. Going to a ceiling view, there is tools to dimension ceilings. There is ceilings by line, which lets you pick two points on screen, and all the ceilings between these two picked points will be dimensioned automatically. There is also ceilings single and ceilings multiple, which lets you select multiple ceilings or single ceilings at a time and place the dimensions of the width and height of these ceilings. Going back to a stair to a plan view, you can dimension stairs in plan and in section views using the stairs dimensioning tools. Click the tool stairs plan, select the stair you wish to dimension, pick two points on the screen, and the dimension line will be placed automatically. You can control whether to dimension the stair using a formula like this number of treads and the length for each thread equals total value. You can also choose to dimension every thread by unchecking dimension stairs with equation here. 
this time if I run the tool again I will get the dimension for each thread inside the dimension line if you select a stair and create our peak two points on a screen you can also dimension the stair width landing width and or the run width going to the section view you can do the same using stair section select the stair and now I have the total number of risers the height for each riser and the equation, the total of this distance. Going back to a plan view, you have the landings tool, which lets you to select multiple landings to place the elevation or the height of these landings. From the expansion of the architecture panel, you have door alignment tools, which aligns doors by a specific distance to the nearest sidewall automatically. So if I am to unconstrain these doors here so they can be freely moved, and let's say I want the distance to the sidewall to be 250 millimeters and then align the doors one element at a time or you can also select multiple doors the doors will be placed so they are always 250 millimeters away from the nearest sidewall Again, you can do this by a single element or select multiple elements at a time and click finish and the distances between the wall, the doors and the near side walls will be modified automatically using the number entered here in the door to side wall distance. We also have tools to create call out views uh, for Curtain wall plans, curtain wall elevations, room plans, room ceilings, stairs plans, and stair section. The scale for the new callout view is set from the architecture configuration window callout scale, and let's say I want this to be 1 to 10. Save the configuration and Let's say I want to create a curtain wall, some curtain wall call out elevations and plans. So plans, CW plans, select this curtain wall, this curtain wall, this curtain wall, and click finish. And now in the project browser, you'll find three new call outs and the scale. And the scale in the newly created, I think this view was present 
before this is actually the curtain wall to the far left here so this is, these are the new these are the new uh, created call-out views and they actually have uh, the scale of 1 to 10 which we entered here in the architectural configuration we can also do this for elevation views to place call-out elevations and larger elevations CW elevations, click a wall or multiple walls, click finish and now there is a new, there is new elevation placed and the scale is 1 to 10 as we entered here after we've created the call-out views we need all of these are used similarly we can then after we've created the call-outs or the views we need we can then place dimensions as we need to and of course these dimensions would be edited to maybe increase the, the text size or do whatever you need as you would any dimension line we also have room doors and swing direction for the doors the room doors writes uh, room data as shared parameters to doors which you can then include in tags and or schedules so room doors tells me I have to turn volume computation on first so I'm going to volume computation and turn on volumes and rerun the tool room doors select the rooms you wish you wish to find its uh, their doors and click finish and now for each of these doors you will have room data like like room name room mark and room id uh, if there is a room that contains multiple doors like this one here you'll find the room mark uh, with a uh, suffix uh, alphabetically so uh, 106a this would be 106b c d and so on and so forth these are all shared these are all shared parameters which you can then uh, include in tags and or schedules so uh, if you are to create a schedule for doors you can define a range filter sort your schedule using uh, the, the data for rules like so um, let's say type and room name Room mark, room ID, so you can include these data in your rooms. Some of these doors will open to the outside of the building like this one and there is no room here obviously to the outside of the building so you may want to uncheck door opens to room and if you uncheck this it, uh, it will be doors opened from room so uh, it will read the room here to the inside instead of reading the room to the outside. If you want to include these data in door schedules, you can do so. Let's start, turn on the door tags and from the tag family, this is a shared parameter file which you can then edit its label and add a new parameter, select, which will be selected automatically. This is the last shared parameter file used in the project. So select a parameter from this 
shared parameter file and rooms. You can then include the room name, room mark, room ID, whatever you need. And of course, you can edit the shape and size of this tag as you would any other family in Revit. I'm going to undo this. You can write the swing directions for the doors by using the swing direction tool. Select all the doors you wish to write its swing directions. Click finish. And now the data for the swing direction is written to the doors. Again, these are all shared parameters which can then be used uh, in tags and or schedules. So this is a left hand door, this is a right hand door. These data are shared parameters. We have also fenestration tool. Which writes elevation or facade da data to objects, walls, doors, and windows. So if I select this wall, I will have its facade data, facade north, this is a north elevation wall. If I select this window here, I will have facade and also facade area. So facade is north, facade area is this number here. These are all shared parameters again, which I can include in dimensions and or schedules. We have the core thickness, the layers, the cross area of walls. The core thickness, as the name suggests, writes core thickness to compound objects like walls, floors, roofs, compound ceilings. So the core thickness is this number here. Where is the Thickness, whereas the width here is the total width or the total th uh, thickness of the wall or floor, roof. This is the core thickness of the core layers of the structure of the wall only. We also have the gross area. Revit automatically provides the area, which is the net area. And we have here the cross area. So the gross area before subtracting windows and doors is here and Revit automatically writes the net area for this wall. We also have tools here to write information like room finish, components, ceiling height, sides, which are all used the same way and the right information as shared parameters. So if I click sides, these rooms will have its sides and assuming most of our spaces are four-sided, it will write side one, side two, side three, side four only. And uh, the uh, data entered here are again in your project units. It only writes four sides, so if you have more than four sides, it will only write four. Assuming most of our spaces are four-sided anyway. So this was the architectural tools available in Revit's Little Dimension Pack. Let me know if you have any questions and also, don't forget to watch the Common Tools tutorial and the other tutorials for structure and MAP. Thank you.